let's go ahead and get started here. Jason, you and I are here talking a lot. We're the only two. Uh, I see people arriving now. Um, let's go ahead and get going. Those of you uh, joining us uh, for the first time, perhaps, or the tenth time, thank you for being here. And I see that Bill DeWeese is getting on the call. Mr. DeWeese is now on. Are you there, Bill? Mr. DeWeese, can uh, you check in? Jason, he's refusing to check in. <laughs> he's probably like me. I usually watch this on my screen, but I dial in for the audio. Actually, he's called in on the computer. Bill, can you see me or hear me? William DeWeese, paging Mr. DeWeese. He may be on that funky computer where he can't uh, see anything. So let's go ahead and uh, until Bill gets involved, we'll just go to tell me anything, uh, something new from filmmaking stuff. Well, uh, sort of a broader problem that I ran into, and I think this, uh, I, I think a lot of folks can relate to it, is self-imposed deadlines and missing them. Uh, I, I had hoped to have my physical book completed by tomorrow, and it's just not going to happen. Okay, and what was the reason for putting that as the deadline? Uh, I, I just wanted to have some sort of deadline to keep myself on top of it. And what ultimately happened is between that deadline and several other deadlines, I spread myself way too thin. And I think that's just something that comes from maybe a lack of experience in trying to make these, uh, you know, trying to complete these products. So you're saying that now, was there was this just some arbitrary date that you picked to try and get this done by? Yeah, it was an arbitrary date. I had hoped to have it, have it available as a downloadable ebook tomorrow and then get it over to the physical and, and released as a physical copy by October 1st. Well, Bill O'Hanlon, who is on the line, just sent me a great link. Uh, I don't know, if Bill, if you put that up on the, uh, on the Facebook group yet, but Bill, why don't you tell Jason about some of the issues uh, that were discussed in that new ebook. Well, I was pretty stunned by this. I told Fred, I was like, holy moly. The book, first of all, is called Be the Monkey. Um, it's, it's by Jack Kilborn, which is a, that's a pseudonym. Um, and it's really um, uh, two authors um, who are pretty successful, Joe Conrath, J.A. Conrath, and Barry Eisler who just decided to opt out of print publishing and they really speak about how one can price and make money with ebooks and I was telling Fred you know I've, I've been doing mostly print books my whole life I've been doing a few ebooks and a few self-published books but I was just converted by this book if that Joe Locke thing didn't that John Locke yeah. or whatever that we talked about previously didn't, didn't sort of push me over the edge this one pushed me all the way over I'm thinking Oh my guys, Fred and I have a proposal out, and I think it'll be good for Fred to have a print book. And that's a little of what these guys said. They said, "Look, it's it's nice to have best the best of both worlds, but you know, having that print uh, book published by a publisher is it's very it's fraught with difficulties and less profit. And eBooks are the you know rising thing. My 92 year old future mother in law." only reads ebooks from now you know now on her kindle app on the ipad and she can't get out of the house and she reads a book a day and she's totally converted over she said i'll never go back this is great so and she's 90 you know, some years old she's 92 uh, heading for 93 in a couple of months so and and again this is i mean th i've got i'm not sure how much there is of the book or how much i got through i think i'm I don't know because I downloaded it onto my Mac rather than onto my Kindle. Yeah. So, or I actually am using the cloud service to read it. So how right. many pages is it? Um, or how many? You know, yeah, it's a little difficult on. Uh, it's a little difficult to say on the Kindle app because they don't tell you how many pages. But it's it's it took me three hours to about two and a half hours to read. Two and a half hours last night to read. So well, let me just say it, that there's three sections. The first section is the most powerful which makes the case. And then there are two others because they got critiqued once they published the first version, then they released the second version, then they got some more response, and they released the third version. They're all, I don't know, you know, not very long. Pretty why, quick reads. why is this important for members of our group or anyone else who's on this webinar? 
Well, I think, you know, the one thing I think that I love the quote, which I've heard before, and I'm sure most of you have heard, is, you know, what Wayne Gretzky says is, don't go where the puck is, go where it's going to be. And the puck is going to be in digital reading. And the mainstream publishers are doing almost everything they can to stop it. And it won't be stopped, just like music downloads weren't stopped, and just like, as Jason knows, you know, movie downloads won't be stopped. The uh, Hollywood, I think, will last a little longer than than print publishers in New York, but uh, they're you know you, you can see that they're on their stage four cancer uh, you know down road, downward spiral. So although the only the only thing that I would uh, add to that, Bill, is that there is a difference between reading and watching movies because reading is by definition a pretty personal experience. Watching movies can be a group experience. Right. I still, I, I have Netflix and I do streaming movies all the time and, and I watch DVDs at home and I still go out to the movies twice a week. So yeah. it is a social experience. It's a popcorn experience. It's a go out with my partner experience. It's a be around a crowd experience. I agree. And I think books don't, there's not that much added to have paper uh, books and, and also the not much value added by publishers. There's a little and it'll get less and less over time is the case that this book takes. So uh, be the monkey, and it's a, a weird analogy if you read the book. Everybody no, I, listening I can... everybody listening here should go get this book immediately after this webinar is over. Well, the funny thing, Fred, is, is about digital delivery, which is on topic. And, Bill, thanks for the recommendation. I just bought the book as we were talking, yeah. and it's already in the palm of my hand on my Kindle. Yeah. Well, and that's the different. case too. For me, there, you know, they say that ebooks can't be compared to print books because there is that impulse buy. And if the what, what was the price, Jason? Like four ninety nine? I can't remember. Actually, actually, I just grabbed it for ninety nine cents. Yeah, it's ninety nine cents. Right. So I think they said that the pricing there's just no barrier to if you're if you're accessing one of these digital devices. There's no barrier to, you know, it's like, maybe I won't even read it, but I'll buy it. Bill recommended it. 99 cents, what have I got to lose? And this, so they sell more in digital copies. And, of course, their profit is more per book, as Fred has said for a long time with self-publishing. But these guys, this guy, Barry Eisler, who's a best-selling author, and I've read all his books. He, he has this Rain series. Some of you may have read it. It's kind of a uh, Japanese-American paid assassin, basically. And um, they're, he's a really good writer. And he turned down a half a million dollar two book contract from St. Martin's Press because he worked out that he could make more in three years. And then he continued to make money after the three years with his ebook publishing and keeping the rights himself. So now let's, let's turn and, and see how, uh, how this affects someone like Burke Allen in the publicity business. Then. Well, I and, and hey guys, I can tell you that I just spent some time uh, last week with a New York Times number one best-selling author uh, who will have to remain nameless, but I will tell you this, that he and I had an extensive conversation about him doing this exact same thing. And, and it's funny you mentioned St. Martin's. He has written for St. Martin's. He's absolutely considering his next book when he finishes his current three-book deal, doing it all with uh, with ebooks and Kindle versions yeah, and, and following you, the same, exact same model. If you read the book, which everyone on this call should download and read it for 99 cents, give me a break. And let me just tell you, it's, it's, you, you will understand how stupid these people are in the publishing industry. And it's exactly, you know, my line was they were, they were sort of bringing up the fact that it's sort of like the uprising of the peasants, whether it be in Egypt or Syria or pick your country. But let me tell you, it's not going to be long before these people are going to get their heads cut off like uh, Marie Antoinette. You know, the, the one thing, Fred, that I, I will add that I think is pretty important that came up in this conversation with this author and another guy who has a, a big publishing deal is that they see the advantage to doing this if you have a platform. Like, you know, Bill O'Hanlon yeah. has a platform. He's already written, you know, 30 some odd books now. It, it would be very difficult for you to just put out an ebook without having some sort of fan base or platform. Now, you can develop that, but basically what, what he was saying, and I agree with, is that you can't just throw it out there and expect, because of the low price point, that everybody's going to get it. There are thousands of 99 cent books that are languishing 
uh, and Kindle stores because nobody well, knows about them. So you've got to have a platform. Very true. And if you take the Be the Monkey book and combine it with what's the name of the other one, Bill, from John Locke? Uh, how I sold a million ebooks in five months, I think it's called. Yeah. If you combine those two books and buy both of them, uh, you will have spent less than a Frappuccino price. And <laughs> you will be getting an infinite level of value. And every time it, these guys are so stupid, it's just unbelievable how arrogant and stupid they are as a group. You know, but it's. But well, I I'll say right. I'll say this. I'll interrupt you a little, Fred, because I don't want this to go by. Burke, you should read this book again. You know, it's cheap and it's quick read. But yep. there's an opportunity, I think, in there for you because what you just said, a platform building, but also he, uh, Joe Conrad, uh, coined a term which Barry Eisler didn't like, called um, what was it? E Eastributors. It's a terrible word, but he's basically saying someone could take 15%, they could be the new agents, they could take 15%, help people build their platforms, help people get their books formatted and uploaded to Kindle and Smashwords. I hadn't, and a couple, I hadn't read yeah, that ahead. portion when I sent you my email, by the way. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and so, you know, they could just put together the package and take what an agent usually takes, which is 15%. Because agents, like publishers, are going to be very, very slow to get on this bandwagon because they're still on the old, they're still holed up in the castle of Versailles and thinking the peasants won't revolt. And right. so I think there's an opportunity. If you read this book, I think you will see, you know, Bert, that there is an opportunity for you and Fred and I have been talking about this opportunity too, to be kind of authors, representatives different from agents, you're not going to approach you know, a big publisher and get them in with that. You're going to do all the scut work and the publicity and platform building for them, and they can focus on writing you know, if they know how to write. So that's right, right. Let me ask Burke a question. Hey, Burke, if yourself and myself and Bill were to combine forces, would it be or is it possible for you in your current business model to, to take – a, 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 the bulk of the money, if not all of the money, on the back end for, for this kind of a venture. So, for example, if we were to combine forces and represent ourselves as one of these people, one of these kinds of groups, um, is are you in a position, given what you do, to be able to get that done by strictly taking a piece of the action? Or do you have to pay the people... Uh, by you know by the services that they provide, or would they, the people that work with you, be willing to come in for a cut of the action as well? I think it's the the last uh, of those options is the one that I would try to figure out. I go to them and say, look, here's an opportunity. We need to be on the leading edge of it. Would you be interested in doing this for a cut? Because I'm telling you that you know this this is the big picture where. Um, and, and Bill DeWeese will weigh in on this. You know, Bill is making, he's got enough money coming in from regular voiceover work that, Bill, what percentage currently of your compensation is coming in in, de in a deferred fashion? Oh, deferred, uh, I mean, very little, less than 10%. Less than 10%. But yeah. if, if you could have it your way, it would be substantially more, correct? Oh yeah, I'm yeah, I'm always willing to yeah yeah. When those opportunities arise, I take advantage of them. So Burke, if you can convince some of the folks who work with you to get placement, this is something that we should have a discussion about because I I think I Bill I think that I think that the guys are exactly right on this issue, and I hadn't even gotten to that point in the book yet. Yeah, you, I I've got to get off pretty quick because I got a call coming in, but I will say this: if we could put together a package of you know a Bill Deweese doing the audio version of Burke doing the publicity and Sandy, my I have an assistant that knows how to format for Smashwords and Kindle and get them up there very quickly as well as create space. And we could just offer that package for authors and take 15% like agents do on the back end and you know help them get their platform built so that they won't be one of those books of languages for 99 cents on uh, Kindle or whatever. I think we could retire sometime. I agree. We'll talk about it. You, got, you have to run, Bill? Yeah, I do. I've got this call coming in from one of our coaching folks. Okay, we'll see you soon. All right, see you.
Cool. So, uh, hey, Bill, why don't you, Bill DeWeese, why don't you share with yeah. people, share with people what's going on with the, uh, and by the way, this is important stuff here, So, but I am going to go ahead and erase it and just get to uh, another issue here. So, Bill DeWeese, to report on some of the experiences with the seminar. First off, Bill uh, is seeing a little bit about the heart attack curve in the seminar <laughs> business. Uh, Avish has recently interviewed me for something. Why don't you tell people what that is, Avish? Yeah, we did uh, basically re, um, re record and updated Fred's uh, seminar on seminars program. We took his outline that he does live, and I went through the whole thing, being playing Mr. Stoop and asking him lots and lots of questions about it. Um, you know, start to finish, soup to nuts, everything you need to know to be able to put on your own seminars and fill them. Yeah, so tell Bill what the heart attack curve is. Oh, the heart attack curve is, uh, it's basically, uh, you know, no one registers in advance. So uh, since you're waiting for money to come and people to come in, you get a heart attack. Um, and then <laughs> right towards the end is when you get your sign up. So everyone has a heart attack because, you know, a week or two out, you still have like only, you know, zero or two people signed up. So they do sign up, though, eventually. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, yeah let's hope so. In well, theory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if registrations are going to come in, oftentimes they come in much later than you'd like them to come in. And so, therefore, you know, that's the case. Um, so, Bill, you want to share anything else that you have gained or gleaned from this experience so far? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it has been a reality check. Um I really didn't know what to expect, but in all honesty, I thought I'd be doing a little better right now in terms of uh, how many seats I would have, you know, filled. And at this point, Fred, two people have uh, have actually signed up through my web marketing magic account. But the weird thing is, it for some yeah for some reason it's not taking money. So I mean, we're, we're Mal, Mallory's following up with these people to get their PayPal information. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's make so, sure. Uh, so in other words, two people have paid at what price? Uh, well, one guy's coming in from LA, and he's already bought the you know the playbook product, so he gets a hundred bucks off. So he bought it for four hundred dollars. Okay, one's at four hundred, um, and and the other's a five hundred dollar. Got it. Okay, so we already have nine hundred dollars in revenue, and how far? We're still a month away, right? Yeah, we're five weeks. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, a little over four weeks. And the maximum number of people we can hold is twenty, right? Twenty, correct. So Eighteen seats left. That's right. I, I feel I feel optimistic. Here's what I would suggest you do: that when it's when it's ten to fourteen days left, with ten to fourteen days left, you want to go after, you know, the people that are local, relatively local. And by local in the seminar business, I mean within three hundred miles driving. So you take a, you know, you take out a map and stick, you know, the compass in uh, right where you are in uh, the lovely Bourbonnais, Illinois area, and and then draw a compass out from that 250, 300 miles. And anybody who's in that area, we're going to give some kind of a special deal to, but we're going to wait because the problem is, is if you start giving people the deals now, and and somebody is in there. I mean, this this. And I don't know, can everybody see my screen? Bill, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so if, if the people, the guy at $400 and the guy at $500, this isn't a big deal because we have a, you know, we have a legitimate reason why this guy paid $400 and this guy didn't because he bought something. So that's pretty explainable. But if, for example, we had, you know, six people in the event who paid, you know, 200 bucks. Uh, now we have a problem, uh, and that problem can be overcome a couple of different ways. Uh, number one is you want to make sure that anyone who gets this deal right here, you know, if that has to happen, that you know one of the conditions is uh, mum is the word, and you know that's really important. But even when you say that. Sometimes it can happen. Now, with a one-day seminar, there's not a lot of time for people to fraternize and get to know each other and s explain their situations. But this does become an issue. But I still yeah. would like to see, you know, as many people as possible. I would, I would rather see if we had a choice of having four people in there who paid full price or 18 people in there, some of whom did not pay full price. I'd like option two. 
Right. And by the way, Fred, uh, we've had within the past week a lot more just activity in terms of people, you know, as you know, inquiring as to what's going on and okay, getting information. So. And so, you know, and so this is one of the things also that I told you know Bill Bill to do, and and I I just think that it's it's imperative. One of the things he was very clever about your total cost on this event, like we talked about before, is virtually zero. Right. Yeah, so I mean, the, the beauty of this is even though, you know, the, the discussion was, and here's something that can, is generalizable to everybody that's on the call. And, and Burke, Burke, just out of curiosity, with, and by the way, for Burke's upcoming event, which, you know, for Bill's, if you're interested, it's audiobookseminar.com. And by the way, Burke, I would like you to take a look at, um, let me just put this because Bill's not going to be here, uh, audiobook seminar.com or actually okay that's uh, it should it'll be dot org as well um, audiobook seminar dot that's good our pop-up our pop-up on exit came up do you see that avisha worked and uh, <laughs> okay so and then uh, the next one worked too great so what we have is by the way on that what you just saw is there were two two things that happened but let me just explain burke this this model for how we put a seminar site together might be worth mm -hmm. looking into to change the uh, Media Mastery Workshop to. So I don't know okay. if you've seen the site, but it's a pretty good... No, I haven't, but I just jotted it down to review, so I will. Yeah, take a look at that. And so now, Burke, um, why don't you tell people about the Media Mastery Weekend, and so this way, you know, people will, we can sort of contrast and compare these two. Well, first thing I'll say is uh, our event, Bill, we did something very similar to what Fred is talking about, where in the last, I think it was two weeks, we targeted in the folks that were very, very close by, and um, we all, could only fit 12 people into our room, and there were, I think, two or three seats left, maybe, and and obviously mum was the word, but, but we got them in at a lower price, and it filled the room, and those people actually wound up bringing, you know, great energy and and value to the event being there they really you know, it, it, it was worth it so so i would do that um, talk about some of your fixed costs there if you would Brooke. so when you uh so how much are you paying for the the place so we we rent the facility the tv and radio studio facility for a thousand dollars that's total correct that's for the three days correct excellent okay yep um, and then I pay each of our instructors uh, an hourly rate. Oh, so you do pay them hourly? Correct. Okay, and so... When yeah, because most of them don't have a product to sell on the back end. Okay, so instructors are paid, uh, in other words, um, and so the total pay for the instructors over the course of three days comes to how much about? You know, I'd have to pull my budget out, and I don't want to slow the call down to do it, but it, it, it averages about $75 an hour for the instructors. So, you know, I think we generally have about $2,000 in instructor salaries for the week. Okay, so around two grand, And the cost of the event is? Uh, $2,997, so $3,000. Okay. And so, again, you break even at a little bit more than, say, one attendee, correct? Correct. That's okay. right. And so I'm going to be sort of pounding the heck out of, of that as well. And what's, for that one, which which uh, URL are we using? Is it Publicity Seminar or what are we using for that? It is, that's okay. correct. Publicityseminar.com, which again, I think that we had that right here, which is this one, right? That's right. Yeah, so if anybody wants to go to that, and by the way, uh, Burke, I did, I finalized my ticket. I will probably be taking, I'm, I'm flying in and out of New York City and I'm gonna take the Bolt bus um, on Thursday or Friday, I'll let you know when it is from New York. Okay. So and that comes into Union I, Station. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that'd be great. And um, uh, we have uh, a, a new person who I think is going to be joining the faculty this time, along with you know the national TV person Karen, who you met, and and the radio guy Rod, who, who worked for Sirius XM and ABC. Uh, one of our faculty people has done the Today Show as a guest and also has sold on QVC. So I think she's going to do very, very well. and That'll bring some value uh, in. She'll talk to people about your on-camera image and, you know, if you have a product, how you can sell it on QVC and all that. So I think that'll be a good addition to the faculty. That's great. Yeah, no, excellent. Good to have people like that who have actually done some of this stuff 
The, uh, by the way, just as, an, as a side note here, folks, one of the things that everybody, if you're not aware of this, if you do any air travel whatsoever, um, they've now been acquired. But remember that you should go to faircast.com whenever you're considering traveling somewhere. And faircast.com will allow you to. Now, when you put in faircast, what happens is that it, it redirects. But don't worry. Just remember faircast. goes to bing.com forward slash travel. And so then what I was doing here is, and I'll just show you a quick example, is I was going, Burke, I'm coming, I think I'm leaving here on the 18th, I'm coming back on the 27th, and I'm going into JFK. Can everybody see this, by the way? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So um, I'm going to, what I did was, I can't believe this, son of a... Uh, because what happens is they build a prediction for you. And I can't, oh man, I bought it last night. And sure enough, it said 80% certainty that it was the best time to buy. I, I just, this is crazy. If they just drop this price to 200, is this one way? Holy crap, hold on. Um, I, this can't, this gotta be one way because I'm gonna be really pissed Fred, off. this is Jason. I don't know if I've heard you this upset. Yeah, well, this, this, has, this has to do with me spending money. So uh, I it cannot That's exactly be, what it hold is. Hold on, let me just. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be. No, it's uh, not stuff. Flights only, and it's got to be. Uh, where's it? it? Should be. Oh, I see. Yeah, round trip. It is round trip. Are you kidding me? It can't be. Oh man, I could. Uh, anyway, so this this can you, place. Can you cancel and reschedule. I could, but. The deal is, and now here it is. Okay, now I don't feel so bad. So the price now, I think I paid total, including tax, of like three eighty nine. dollars But here's my suggestion, real quickly. This is going to make me nuts if this is the case. Is it really two eighty? dollars Are you kidding me? It's all Delta. I don't know about American. Let me see. Anyway, so your American five seventy seven, dollars but Delta's doing it for two eighty. dollars Unbelievable. Anyway, so here's the deal. Now, this little guy here, this buy, this says buy. Mine had a, a, a less, a less in, it had 80% certainty, whereas this is like buy it now. This is confidence level here, where it says, anyway, this site, not to get too far off subject here, go here and, and put that on there. If you're considering traveling anywhere, put that in there and do not buy until they give you the signal to do so. End of story on that. Um, okay, good. So just something you, for everybody. Can you do hotels too, or just uh, is it just airplanes? I think that's and, just for and... flights. Although you okay. know what? Hold on, I'm wrong here. It says it has hotels too. So I mean, you know, I haven't really looked for anything but flights on here. But it 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 has an algorithm set up, Bill, so that you you are making a very good decision. So I pulled the trigger yesterday when it said 80% certainty that I should buy. Clearly, had I you know, and again, I want to stay on American Airlines, but if I was willing to go to Delta. I could have gotten it for 280 as we just saw, which I just paid, I think, total with tax, like 389. So the 280 fare on Delta, because look at this, this, look at this curve, how it dropped. This is, see, this is nerve wracking to me. And by the way, the best day to buy airfares is on a Wednesday. So I should have waited one more day. Hmm. Yeah, and I'm pissed now. But you see over here, it says American Fives. Anyway, enough of that. Um, so uh, other stuff, let's talk. Burke or, or or anyone really jump in and I see Dave Hamilton you're on the call right David Hamilton Paige hey, and David Fred. yeah you're there I'm here. right I'm here okay cool I can you hear me would, yeah I can hear you okay yes uh, so now um what which site should we go to now is is it authority site 101 authority sites plural authoritysites.com authority sites 101.com okay. 101.com. Okay, so what's the progress that you've made since last we spoke? Well, the, the, the whole idea of this is streamlining the process of letting people get uh, a great looking, effective authority site up, uh, lowering the cost and decreasing the, the uh, timeline to get it done. So what we've done is we've prepared what people need to think about in terms of content and images and things put that into a document for them to fill out and we've kind of got a, a bit of an assembly line where um, they the step one is preparation they think about the content and the colors and everything 
Step two is the installation where we put up the web, the WordPress and uh, this theme. And then the final step is customization where we add the content for them. You know what? What you and just so described, what you just described is not on above the fold. And I think that was really well done. So I would put it somewhere right under here. That, yeah, that's that's actually a good idea. We we we've documented under how it works. Yeah. In the in the new, but uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's a good idea. So. But also, um, Dave, and then we've one of the things that looks yeah. really good now is people can see some samples. This looks great. Yeah, we and you know what we found is that most people get a vision when they when they can browse through a portfolio. Yep. So we. We, we took all the ones that we, we've made, put them there, and we found most people say, well, I want one a little bit like this one with a touch of this one. And well, that makes Bill, it real easy for us. Hey, Dave, let me ask you this. If I was a customer and I looked down here and I said, you know what? I like this Red 5 marketing one. Can, could you, you could basically take that site, clone it, and then make the small, the small alterations they need, right? So it's, it's not as much work for you, hopefully. That's correct. Yes. Great. Great. And so I'm now, the, Go truthfully, the, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. The bottleneck is usually people preparing what they want their site to say, but um, putting the framework up has gotten a lot easier for us. Yeah, I think this is good. Oh, by the way, the other thing that I could I could sort of help you with on that is if you know, and whether it's me or someone else doesn't really matter. Um, it would be nice to. Since the bottleneck, as you just described it, is happening, and this is interesting because Dave has now created a sort of complete solution for getting a great looking site up quickly and easily, but it, the bottleneck is creating whatever the copy is. So why don't we come up with a solution for the copy? Copy seems to be the bottleneck, right? Correct. Okay, so let's make sure that it is not. So how do we do that? And whether it's, you know, you could have initially, and, and again, I would, I would either, since you guys can't do this in-house, in other words, you don't have a copywriter right there, what you could right. do is to make sure that you have someone who can, and, and very clearly define exactly what that means. And again, under copy, I would provide people with again three options. We write, you know, we write it for you, sort of 100%, and that's going to be the high. Uh, we help help you write it, and then you have two levels of that, I think. And I this one I'd say a lot, and this one I'd say same thing, but instead of a lot, a little. So then here you'd have three tiered pricing. And I don't know what this would be, but it might be an additional 997. This one would be, you know, 777 or maybe, man, maybe even less, maybe, you know, uh, 597. And this one is, you know, we're just gonna look it over for you, it's 297. So in other words, I think that if people are getting hung up with that, there will be some people who will say, you know what, I just wanna have somebody do it for me. Let's make that part of it because that's not what you guys are prepared to do, right Dave? That, yeah, right now. Well, I mean, we've got people that have the the internet marketing mindset, but we we're, we're not necessarily experts in their field. So, it uh, writing copy from scratch is going to be a little difficult. But if they give us some direction, we can pick it up from there. So, are you saying that you do have the ability to write copy for well, someone? I, I I think we. To be honest, we don't necessarily want to. But with what you're describing, if if they're paying us. I think we'd be pretty happy to. So I think this is a good idea to to make that an option, not just absorb it into the, the, the general cost. Does anybody have any questions or comments about that topic or issue? I, I have a, a thought. This is Bill. Um, to automate the process, what about like a uh, like a form website where you ask all the important questions to, you know, get the, the data from them that you need so that otherwise you're probably having somebody make a phone call, spend time on the telephone. I would agree. I, hey, Bill, I agree. I would do it similar to what we came up with at publishingabook.com for, for people to create their uh, proposal. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Well, actually, that, it's a great idea. And Fred, if you, if you click on the How It Works link, 
what we found we we that people you know kind of want to go started? think about it. This one. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, 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 no, up, front, up on the top, the top menu. Okay. Now, the, if, you, the, if you want me to go there first, I'm not, I'm not thinking that way when I see the site. I'm going to the first green arrow that you put here. This is where my eye yeah. is gone immediately right here. Good, good, good feedback. Good okay, feedback. So how we'll we'll make a big button. Um, and we're going to spice this next page up. But we have that Word document you see there, which is a nine-page, you fill in the blanks and get it back to us. What do you want on the the home page, what do you want on the about us page and you know things like that. You know what you so, need over here to the right of this is a little video explaining what it is that they can click on. Three separate videos, one for preparation, one for installation, one for customization. Awesome. Awesome. Love it. Yeah, do that because uh, that'll help people to understand. But I by the way, I'm I'm being critical now, very critical, when I should say, I mean I think this this now is looking better and better and better. Well, I appreciate the, the critique from anybody because that's our goal is, you know, and you, Fred, I've talked to you about my frustration where I'm spending all my time going back and forth with clients, and I thought maybe not completely automating it, but just streamlining, and we can get a client in and out the door in under a week if they're prepared and not going back and forth with us. Okay, so, so now maybe this is, maybe maybe this becomes a headline. So instead of whatever we have up here, which by the way, I don't see anything really compelling here. Um, I would say that your new, you know, something should be in, in just six days. You, you can have a great looking website like, like the ones below up running and making you money Whew. so in other words in other words let's put something because this site as it looks right now I think it's a very professional looking site but I don't uh, authority sites professional money this doesn't give me the benefit here so I would yeah. actually think that we need something that's you know that really pops in terms of a promise and a benefit does anybody have any comments on that Jason? Uh, my comment, Fred, is I agree with what you're saying, and I'm looking at the site now with the critical eye of a, of a marketer saying, you know, what is the headline here? What, what, and, and that's what you're talking about. Can we put a headline up there that's aimed at the benefit? Anybody else, Burke? Hmm. No, I, you know, I think the... Uh, because we run into this a lot with our clients where it becomes this big, long, drawn-out process. I think the key thing is what you put in there. In just six days, you can get it done. Yeah, I think that that, that should help. Um, you know, and Fred, if I can ask this it, question. Yeah, I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, what do you think the benefits ought to be for this, this service? Well, I tell you what. To me, it comes down. And again, everybody, I'm not, you know, I'm not a genius. This is just my thought. And, and the idea, my thought would be that the, the biggest benefits to what you offer, Dave, is I can have a great looking site up really fast. Okay. I, I just don't, what, what else, is there something I'm missing other than that? Because, you know, anyway. Well, the, the, hey, what we, hey what, Dave, what, let me jump in here for a second. The one thing that, that does occur to me that might really take down barriers for people to do business with you this way. That Word document that they fill out with all the, uh, the information right. uh, that's elsewhere on the site, right here. if you made that a web form rather than it be one extra thing that they got to you know, download and open up and, and then fill out and send back to you, if it were an embedded web form that they could send back, that's just one more thing that makes it feel quick and easy. Agreed, 100%. Okay. Can I take it even a step further? Yep. And instead, Dave, you're mentioning, you know, you ask questions like, what do you want on the homepage? You know, what do you want us to say about you? What about specific questions that, you know, that, that get to, like, for instance, uh, who is your typical cu typical customer? You know, what is your primary service? How long have you been in business? Uh, stuff that you can derive, the because, again, they, then they have to think about it, and they may still not give you the information that you need to write good copy. Does that make yeah. sense? And in, in use that as we kind of put the site together to guide them. 
Cause, I think cause, that that just narrows down the phone. This is old Radio 101 stuff that Bill is talking about that we both have done. That'll just focus it right in and make it that much easier to get it up and finished. Yeah. Because yeah. then there won't be any back and forth with them asking, all right, well, that's great philosophically, but what do you do? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me ask one, one last question on this. The With regards to the web form versus the Word document, um, I found that some people... They want to go think about it. It's not, you know, just writing it off the top of their head. It's a little more challenging. Yep. Uh, I give them the so they option. want to write it. Go ahead. Give them the option, Dave. Say, click yes, here. Yes, give them the option. So do it yeah. now or think about it. I think that's great. And so, you know, there's a web form. It's a paid plugin called Gravity Forms that it will save everything into a WordPress database. So you can go in at any time. And archive the forms. They're not just emailed to you. It's 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 documented. So I think that's a great idea that I'm going to put into practice. And so this is it. Yeah. So it's they're really easy to use, and it really uh, works well as a uh, as a way of archiving what people submit to you. By the way, when you have impressive numbers, this makes sense to do. If you see down here. How many gravity form installations they have? 192,000. I would put that there too myself. Yeah. So yeah. what does gravity forms do, by the way? It's, well, you know, there's a lot of plugins, contact form plugins, but all they do is they email the form submission to you. This emails it to you, but it also adds it to uh, a WordPress database. So you can go back and archive all the form submissions in a you know in a spreadsheet or you can you know you have them on file in your WordPress site got it and they go for as little as 39 bucks uh, that's on one site 99 bucks for three and 199 by the way if you haven't noticed yet look at the th three tiered pricing here so we have $39 mm -hmm. we got $99 we got $199 you know it's the same stuff it's just like you know the Chrysler had the Chevette and they whatever the Le Mans and then the high and I don't know what I don't know cars that well so but three-tiered pricing sure. makes a lot of sense. Good. Um, I like that pricing table, by the way, just from an aesthetic perspective. Uh, if anybody sees a plug-in for that one, let us know. Yeah, really. Yeah. You know what? I think that's a good point, Jason. Is is I love. I would love to have some some temp some WordPress plugin that would allow us to all of us to have this and give us eight or ten different options because this is great for a page that sits on its own. But what about when we have a page where we want to have it like embedded as it, we can't have it quite this big. We want to be able to change colors. Jason, what else would you want? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Fred. One of the things, I have a pricing table that I'm testing with WordPress. It's just not working out for me because it takes up way too much space and I don't have the ability to customize colors and fonts the way that I would like to. Yeah, so I mean. Fred, if you'd like to see that in action, uh, sure. Back on, I, I'm playing with the same one Jason has showed me on the AuthoritySites101.com site. I'll show you what it looks like. Um, just put, uh, go ahead, authorities, in. and then slash test dash product. Test dash product. Correct. Okay. And this is uh, I'm just kind of playing around with how. To, to display options. Okay. So it, this isn't ready for production, but I'm just seeing, you know, it kind of is along the same lines where you can, you know, yeah. have different packages and what's on it. The question is, and I guess that Jason and I are both wondering, is can we buy a plugin that will do what this has done here and allow us to customize both size of the chart the elements of the chart, the font, and the color. This is a plug-in, and you can. There's like four or five different color options, but you know, it's it's not completely customizable. So, customizable. So, yeah. Um, I, you know, uh, I, you know, Jason, what do you think? Jason, what do you think? Uh, well, I bought this well, plug-in myself. Plug and myself and oops, somebody's got some well, feet. Somebody's got, got some feet. Got, did somebody just did get somebody onto just some mic? We got to double some. talk here. Okay, go ahead, Jason. Uh, I was going to say, I bought this plug-in. I'm testing it, but like Dave said, the features are just limited, and unfortunately, uh, it 
that part on the far left, I'd love to get rid of it and do what they did in the other example that you just showed where they actually write the features into each pricing uh, table as opposed to the check marks. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. So in other words, you're saying this looks better at least yeah, for I just, your Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I guess, I, I, guess I could test it and find out it doesn't work at all, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, it'd be great if we had a plug-in that had multiple options, this being one of them, the other one being another option. Hey, Dave, could you check at some point and find out if that is a WordPress uh, theme that this gravity thing's on? Maybe we can uh, look at the code and find out if it is a plug-in. Yeah, um, yeah, that's a good idea. And, and I've never searched, but I'll bet these pricing tables you know, there's there's plugins for everything. Fred, do you see? Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know if you. Oh yeah, it is. It is. It is a plugin. It's, I, I see W. If you see WP dash, different places. Yeah, it is. Interesting. Yeah. So maybe we can, maybe you can figure out for us exactly how we uh, make this or where that where they got that from. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little research, but if we find that, you know, I agree with you, Fred. Three, three tiers makes makes all the difference. Now, is there a way to put uh, – this is just a, a stupid geeky question. Is there a way to put something in the source code where if people check your source, they can actually click on a link that's an affiliate link for you? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's a good question. Uh, be a great idea. I don't know. That. Yeah, yeah, because people like us, that's exactly what we do. Yeah, I'd like to be able to view source and then have them see it and go, oh, I like that. Click on this link, and here it is. It's an affiliate link. That would be cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, agreed. agreed. Anyway, sorry to get geeky on everybody there. Um, <laughs> uh, Avish, you haven't uh, contributed? Say hi. Tell us what you're up to. Well, so far I've been uh, enjoying this discussion. I actually bought that ebook as well. Bill was talking about the top of the hour. So, um yeah, I mean, this has just been rolling along. I mean, these updates, other than continuing to blog, and the one thing we had talked about yesterday is I've worked on uh, breaking out my uh, my email lists and updating the autoresponder to be a little more uh, you know, regular contact with the people who sign up on this list. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. Right now, to bring everyone else up to speed, what I've been doing is anyone who's been, I've had kind of my general list for years, and anyone who's been signing up for the various speaking services just kind of get dumped into that main list. So. You know, Fred and I were talking the new strategies to, which makes a little, it, it sounds obvious now that we're talking about it, but just something I haven't done for years is creating two lists, um, you know, one for kind of my general speaking business and then a separate one just for the speaking expert people, you know, hit them every week with an e-zine and then once every so often with, uh, you know, some kind of a sales offer type thing. Yeah, I like that. And then the, uh, what else was I thinking about here? I think that that's, you know, I, the, the idea of breaking up lists, but one of the things that both Avish, you and Bill DeWeese, you know, I think that sometimes, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make it so everybody else makes money because that happens and I make money and I feel good about everything. But one thing that's, you know, let's, let's, let's be very honest about this. Bill, the total number of opt-ins you have is how many? Bill DeWeese. 222. And Avish, how many do we have on Speaking Expert? Uh, from this sign up specifically, 100. Okay. So if anyone thinks that those kinds of numbers will result in huge dollars coming in at this point in time, you're delusional. It, this has to be 222,000 you know, thousand people, and this is 100,000. And then all of a sudden, we have some big money coming in if we do things right. So I think we just have to figure out a way to number one, it's nice that the numbers are fairly low because Avish, you know, when I looked in and both of you guys, you send me your, your, your results, the Google analytics every Monday, I can't really tell from that chart, given the goal structures or whatever, exactly what our opt-in rate, but Bill, if you were guessing and you have a feel, what's the opt-in rate? Well, yeah, I'm getting, I'm averaging two to three days. So let's say, well, let's say 18 a week, and I'm getting 280 visits on average a week. So uh, what does that come out to? It's not great, but is that even 10? Was it 5%? Yeah, 
Is that right or is it? Um, it's around five. It's around like eight. No, it's, it's closer to ten. Yeah, it should be about eight. You're right. Closer to ten. Okay, eight to ten. Let's just say. And Avish, what do you think ours is on Speaking Expert? Our, the one I was about the same. That goal was coming in, you know, eight to ten percent as well. Okay. So now, obviously, what we should be doing now is, since traffic has not yet been ramped up. Our goal should be to try and increase this. The problem is with the numbers that we have coming in, you know, we may want to try a quick split test to see if we can get something that'll go to 15% perhaps. Because once the traffic starts rolling in, I mean, obviously we'll be able to test things a lot quicker. But th this is such an important number here, this opt-in rate. And let's not just get fat and happy thinking when we start getting tons, of, and, and Bill, given the fact that we've paid Ermel some money to generate us some traffic, we better be very, very cautious and careful about looking at the numbers once that traffic starts to come in, because if not, we're wasting it. I woke up thinking about that at 5 o'clock this morning. Did you really? I sure did. I was, yeah. Are, are you Couldn't guys sleep. both using pop-up domination as a plug-in? I, think I am, yeah. Yeah, we are here on Speaking uh, I was, but it doesn't seem to be working today. Oh, it may. Oh, are you saying it has a cold or fever? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't know. It, I know. I logged, went over to the website today and it didn't pop up, so I don't you know. Call yeah. them sick. That no, yeah, actually, Bill. It's on strike. In your case, try this. Like for example, let's let me let me go to the site for a second, because I think I mean, there it is. Is that it? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Now the reason. Yeah, Bill. Bill, sometimes when you go enough times, it's you cookie it and it won't show oh. up for you anymore. That's what Stanley that told me. Sense. Stanley okay. told me if you keep going on on the same thing, it'll stop showing up for you. Yeah, they don't. I see. They yes. don't want to because you've been to the site so many times and your cookies are intact. What's going to happen is that the, the it doesn't want to keep popping it up because I, and I think that's a setting, right, Avish, within the yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The default is seven days. And what does that mean? If the seven days that if you get it, that once, means if you come the first time after the first time you see the pop up, you won't see it again um, until after it's been seven days that you come back to the site. Now, is this is this a pretty easy thing to go in and change the setting of? And is it something that Bill Dewey's, if given a couple of uh, sentences on how to do it, could change it himself and see for himself? Yeah, just in the WordPress dashboard on the left side, there's a pop up domination link. Just click on that; it has all the settings there. Oh, okay. Bill, can Bill you if you can start this, just contact me. I'll help you with it. Okay, thanks, Dave. Sounds good. Um, Bill O'Hanlon, you're back on the call, so you were. Uh, I am. We. Ju I just had a, a call with one of our new. We we're starting a new uh, book writing and publishing coaching group uh, tomorrow, and another one on speaking. And um, we one of our um, publishing people who just signed up. He said, you know, is it possible that I could consult you already? I got a book offer for $40,000 and an agent that's interested in representing me. And I need to talk to somebody. And I said, okay. <laughs> so we talked for about 20 minutes. And he said, I've already gotten my value out of the, out of the coaching program. He's already going to make his money back in the first day. Nice. Because I, I told him how to, how to deal with the agent and how to deal with the with the book publisher and he'll make more money than he would have. So why don't you why don't you make sure to email him and ask him for a uh, a quote right now that we can throw up on the site because that's pretty powerful. Yeah, that's good stuff. He already got it. He already got the offer before us uh, before that's why he signed up. He's like, "Shoot, I don't know anything." And the other thing is he said, "I don't know how I'm going to write a book in a year." They're telling me they want it next June and I said, "Oh, Fred and I'll deal with that." Right. We know how to Let we know how to get books written fast and if you can't write it yourself, we'll find somebody to write it. He said, "No, I want to write it myself, but I'm so busy. I just don't know if I can get it done in a year." I said, "Oh my god, you'll be able to get it done in a year." Well, why don't we show we'll them the benefits the of getting it done, too? Yeah, that's true. Excellent. Okay, good. Well, that's uh, I think a pretty good place to stop for today. Anybody else have any final thoughts, comments, ideas? Hey, I got I got a quick question sure. that maybe someone can help me with. Um, I have recently, just in the last couple of weeks, discovered that uh, whenever I try to embed YouTube videos in WordPress now, it's not working. Um, and all my old ones still work. And even when I go and copy the way I did it from the past into a new post, it'll either just it'll usually just show the link. I'm wondering if anyone's encountered that and has a solution to it. You, what's your length, by the way? My what? Length. Of the length the of the videos. Oh, there's any, it's really any video. It's, it's one is nine minutes, one's like a two-minute video. I found they're not all mine, just any YouTube video. Okay, Dave. 
these, I, I have a thought. Just so you know, when sometimes when you embed a video in the visual or in the code section, and then you go back and forth in WordPress, it will actually alter the code, which is weird. But what I always do is I get a plugin called Smart YouTube. Makes it really easy to embed videos. I've never had a problem with it. Yeah, I think I saw that. I got another issue going on when my my install, my search on YouTube or on WordPress is airing out. But so I'll, I'll look. I'll see if I can install a smart YouTube. That may be the way to go. Cool. Well, if yeah. You do, or should be you not. Know, we'll we'll geek out together. Yeah. By the way. Okay. You, Sounds good. Thanks, if Dave. you guys figure that out, make sure and post it in the uh, Facebook uh, JV Partner thing. And uh, also, sure. just to let you know, uh, Mark from Iceland is on the call and is not set up as a panelist yet. Sorry about that, Mark, because we can only have five at a time. But uh, he's he's on from Iceland, and I want to make sure that we start to get... He's been doing... Uh, I had a couple of critiques on some of the video stuff that he's doing, but let's try and get uh, Mark to, to be able to start making some money, too. And uh, Mark, post your questions on the Facebook site to do that. Good. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Good place to stop there. Any other further comments? Thanks, Brad. Good deal. Thank Good you. Good stuff today. Yeah. Good talking, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for being on the Thanks, call, everybody. guys. Great. Thanks, everyone. Next, Bye. next one. The organizer has ended the session, and this call will be disconnected. Goodbye.